You're gonna love today's Know the Cause. How many of you miss pasta? Kyle is cooking up something called shirataki pasta. It's a root. You're gonna love this. How many of you have a pet? A dog, for example, a cat. How many of you are worried about mycotoxins in the pet food or in the house you're living in? We're gonna address that today. And then how many of you are wondering about gluten? How many people have a gluten problem? Do they really? Or is the same wheat impregnated with mycotoxins and fungus? When you stop eating it, you feel great. Was that gluten or was that mycotoxins? Opening today's show, two of my dear friends, Dr. John Trowbridge, Dr. Roby Mitchell, talk about childhood skin conditions. And I'm telling you, I could talk to these guys for a year and never get tired of it. All that and a whole lot more on today's Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. You guys remember the old saying back in the 60s or 70s, what if they had a war and nobody came? <laughs> yes. You, do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Dr. Roby Mitchell, Dr. John Trowbridge, sit with me today, and I'm telling you, I feel like a giant, but it is because I have stood on the shoulders of these two doctors mm -hmm. who I have learned so much from and have so much respect for. What if we had a symptom that the doctor treated wrong? What if we had divvied up the human body, dissected it here, you take the ear, nose, and throat, you take the bones and joints, uh, you take the reproductive organs, you take the feet, you take the brain, you know. Wait a minute, we had that system. <laughs> what if we had a war and nobody came? What if we had all these systems and they weren't put together right? I wanna show you, Dr. Mitchell brought in a couple of slides here. Dr. Mitchell, I'll let you take over, but Dr. Trowbridge sees this all the time too in his practice. Yeah, so what we're seeing here is, again, a manifestation of critter, over, what I call critter overgrowth, okay, right? Just, yeah. and, it, 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 and, and I say critter to get people away from, you know, from necessarily talk, uh, talking about yeast or yeah, a bacteria right. or whatever. Bugs. If we say critters, right, it's, it's generic. <clears throat> but we're seeing an epidemic of these children that are developing these skin rashes, um, eczema, psoriasis, whatever you want to call it. But the problem is not the skin, right? And so immediately the, the mother, the doctor or the dermatologist want to stick something right there, right, to make that go away. But that's not the problem. The problem is they're not producing enough hydrochloric acid. And when they're not in producing enough in their belly, and they're not producing enough hydrochloric acid, that allows the yeast to overgrow. And then that becomes systemic, and the immune system reacts to that, depending on the child's genetics. It may manifest as this uh, eczema or psoriasis, but it may manifest as skull cap. It may manifest as asthma if the yeast is in the lungs. It may manifest as... A a recurrent strep throat or ear, uh, you know these ear nose throat manifestations or colic <clears throat> but those are all smoke from the fire right yep. what you want to do is get down and put out the fire and that's easily done by just taking uh, these capsules of robenzyme or hydrochloric acid putting it in each feeding right? these are your yours right you you make these, these yes are, yeah, I, yeah. I developed yep. that formula right to put in the hydrochloric acid plus digestive enzymes plus these methylating B vitamins and they take those and then very quickly I mean within 24 hours you know 48 hours we get from this to this and then uh, from this this is the same thing a little back of the leg little yeah. back of the yeah. leg and again, the back of the leg, that's where you'll get moisture. And anytime you get moisture, right, you get more fungal overgrowth, right? But again, you give them the uh, hydrochloric acid capsules and, I mean, in two days, things are cleared up. You're not a dermatologist, Dr. Trowbridge, but you see a lot of this. Common sense, if, if someone came to me, you know, say my grandbaby and mom brought him to me and I saw something like that, I'd say, boy, you got to see the best dermatologist. I happen to know the best dermatologist. The best dermatologist isn't a stomachologist. Right. Correct. He doesn't know this. How far off are we in medicine? If, if a dermatologist, and I worked six years in dermatology, if a dermatologist knew that hydrochloric acid, you swallow it, mm -hmm. would change that, his practice would go well, excuse the pun, belly up. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it just, medicine as we know it today, because this child's good for a shot of cortisone, right. and topical, topical cortisone. steroids. Is, year after year. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. other illnesses that they'll develop. Right. Because, you know, everybody's got skin, so you can see it, okay? And so they have 
the ease of diagnosis is, oh, you better see the skin doctor. But, you know, when, when we have secret illnesses inside and then we're suffering and we have a complaint, we go to a system doctor, not the problem doctor. Because if you don't know the cause, then you don't know who to go to. You just go to the one where your system complaint is located. The metaphor is like those five men trying to diagnose the, what the, the elephant is, yes, right? Exactly. And the one that's holding the tail, well, he's more like a snake. And the one that's, uh, <laughs> uh, and so each one, because they're blind exactly. and they're feeling a different part of the elephant, well, he's got skin like a snake, you know, and, uh, or uh, you know, the, and the, the tusk. trunk of a tree, so, exactly. uh, Right, and so mm -hmm. each one of these doctors, you know, when they look at something like this, well, the skin doctor is gonna say, well, we need to put this on it, right? Or the GI doctor is gonna do uh, another thing. And so, again, it's this whack-a-mole medicine is what I call it that <laughs> keeps us putting in all these band-aids, right, that then cause further problems. How, how great is that name? I mean, know the cause. Know the cause. Yeah. I mean, awesome. does, <laughs> yeah. that, does that not it's, say it? In a nutshell, right? I mean, yeah. it, it's just... Well, if, if you don't have the right diagnosis, close only counts on horseshoes, hand grenades, and shotguns. Yeah. Okay? And so if you want to have the right treatment, it's a good place to start is the right diagnosis. Know the cause. And it's not the system involved. It's not the problem you see, it's what's causing the problem. Are misdiagnoses rampant? Absolutely. Because Only you can 90%. treat that with a little cortisone, it'll look better for a week. Yes. And well, the mother will think they did it. 40 years ago, they realized that if you just had more than uh, double the amount of B6 we get in our diet, we'd cut the number of heart attacks in half. And where are we today on that? Yes. Wow. Right. Dr. John Trowbridge, Dr. Roby Mitchell, amazing men. If you're really blessed, you'll make an appointment to see one of these guys. I don't know if you're you're crazy booked, but you still have an opening in mid-March of 2018. <laughs> thank you. 19, thank you. No, thank you both very much for being here. Really appreciate you guys. You know, when you get my age and you've worked in one field for a long period of time, I'm going on my 47th year uh, in this field. You see a lot of things come and go. I remember maybe it was the 70s where gluten enteropathy, gluten sensitivity was a big deal. And then poof, it disappeared. It's back. Folks, here's what's happening. The first few patients gave a blood test and they saw anti-gluten antibodies in their blood. So the doctor said, wow, you must have a gluten problem, be allergic to gluten. So they went off wheat. And, and other, what is it, barley and wheat or something, and, and they begin feeling much, much better. And so just blanket across America right now, you're going to a doctor and saying, wow, I got stomach problems or breathing problems. And the doctor is saying, I think you might be gluten sensitive. I want you to go home and go off wheat. Wheat's in everything. I once learned that table pepper is like 20% wheat. It's in everything. And so these people go home and they go off all wheat and sure enough, in a few days, they feel great. And doctors say, see, you have gluten sensitivity. Do you really? Is this gluten thing blown totally out of control? I've seen beer with gluten-free written on it. I mean, it's, I've seen candy that's gluten-free. Remember, gluten-free is corn okay? Is yeast okay? Is sugar okay? So after a few weeks on this gluten-free diet, wheat-free diet, they begin to feel kind of punk again without realizing that it's the corn and the sugar maybe that's making them feel punk. Why? What is it in corn and sugar? It's mycotoxins, it's fungal metabolites that might have caused the problem in the first place. So just walk down this road with me. As you're watching this, keep in mind that as a doctor, if all you own is a hammer, then the whole world looks like a nail to you, right? No screws out there, just nails. Okay, here we go. So gluten sensitivity, get this, researchers pre uh, presenting at the 2016 United European, not American, gastroenterology conference have identified a group of non-gluten proteins that can trigger symptoms of asthma, MS, chronic pain, and more. If not gluten, what is it in wheat that's causing the sickness associated with eating it? Folks, that has to be the answer. Now, you and I, because you've been a viewer of Know the Cause for many, many years, Doug, this is a no-brainer. Wheat, you are teaching us, is often has mycotoxins in it. All these people going off wheat and feeling better, was it gluten or was it going off the poisons that are deposited in the wheat during harvest or after harvest while they're sitting in silos? I think it's the mycotoxins, but they don't. There's got to be something in that wheat that's causing these reactions, and if it's not gluten, they're going to dig. And in Europe, they are digging, and here's what they're blaming it on. 
Researchers believe that perhaps another protein, a different one in wheat, called amylase trypsin inhibitors, might cause the symptoms. They're always thinking something that is in this wheat. They're not thinking mycotoxins. The ATIs, amylase trypsin inhibitors, are a small group representing about 4% of wheat proteins, but they are powerful, says this group. It just will never cease to amaze me. If you don't know fungus, do you really know nutrition? Do you really know health? Do you really know clinical medicine? If you don't know fungus. So what is extracted from every doctor's education? Mycology, the study of fungus. Lots of bacteria, lots of virus. Okay, vaginal yeast, ringworm, jock itch, toenail fungus. That's the only way yeast can impact you. Wrong. I think it causes cancer. And I have some data that's very, very compelling, as you know. So go with me on this last slide. <clears throat> Researchers believe, hey, let's stop this nonsense. Mycotoxins inhibit wellness. They can make us sick. And not a specific enzyme like ATIs. Wheat is loaded with mycotoxins, yet the word mycotoxin in this European convention did not appear either in the article or in the convention. Folks, when I'm teaching physicians at some of these meetings, I mean, it's absolutely amazing when you see their faces. The question arises, are mushrooms okay? Well, I don't really know, but they're fungus. They're not a vegetable, so I'd avoid them. Do antibiotics cause problems? Dr. Costantini with the World Health Organization said antibiotics are actually mycotoxins and mycotoxins cause cancer. Wow. When you look out at this crowd of the most educated, wonderful people you've ever met, our doctors, they represent all of our doctors, it's amazing to me how those huge brains hold all this information, but how they also miss the most important course in medical education. Okay, mycotoxins are in wheat. End of story. Okay, now quickly, if you live in an apartment building or in a condo, you probably got pesticides sprayed all around it. Same in your office, right? What do you do about that and can it be dangerous? Next, Blue the Wonder Dog. Don't miss this. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Did you know that there are at least 70 widely used pesticides that are in use? And these are classified as probable or possible human carcinogens. We find pesticides in our homes, our schools, our hospitals, and our workplaces. But the greatest exposure comes from the amount of chemical residue that's on our food. You can minimize exposure by buying organic vegetables and fruits. But I like to wash my fruits and vegetables in a sink with half a cup of distilled white vinegar. I look at the label to find a natural vinegar that says made from grain on the label. If it does not say made from grain, it's probably a petroleum product. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. My new best friend, Blue, here. Folks, so many of you have questions. This is a blue healer, three years old, male blue healer. And what a cool dog. He's one of the guys, one of the filmographers here, dog. And I have just fallen in love with this dog. Um, folks, the reason we brought him in today, so many of you have questions about your pets. You know, what's... What's wrong with my pet? Okay, we're gonna go over that a little bit here while I continue to feed Blue to keep him here. Yeah, you like that stuff, huh? Let me give you a real bonus, piece of beef jerky. You wanna be a happy dog? There you go, yeah. The reason we brought him in here today is to educate you a little bit. When there's too many mycotoxins in our human food supply, you know, in corn and things like that, guess where the corn goes? to animal feed. So when you have a dog that isn't thriving, is weak, its hair is falling out, or a cat, you need to think about their food first. There you go. Oh, your owner isn't gonna like this, bud, because I've been giving you goodies all morning. Understand also that if they have more mycotoxins in their food supply, and look at the size of him. You know, I'm probably four times bigger than him. Animals are relatively small, but the one thing I wanna point out to you is this that animals also dig in the dirt and animals live in our home. Animals are getting more mycotoxins in their food supply. That's been reported. But if you're wondering, if you're seeing that your animal is not thriving, is sick, um, folks, you have to think about two things and you're involved in this. You have to think, number one, am I sick? 
am I having some of the same symptoms or am I sick all the time and running from doctor to doctor? If Blue isn't thriving, he's not eating, he's sick, his hair is falling out, mold in your home, it's known to cause health problems, right? Blue is just giving you a signal or your parakeet or your hamster or your cat. They're just giving you a, a signal that it might be the house. If it's not the house, it might be his food. Can you high five me on that? Can you high five me? There you go, that's a good dog, yeah. Such a beautiful, beautiful dog. Understand that animals, if you look at Blue here, yeah, you got that? If you look at Blue, what's he got? He's got two eyes, two ears, a nose, a mouth, two lungs, intestines. They're just us, right, with the inability to communicate. Although he does speak, he'll do all sorts of good things as long as I keep giving him food. The problem is we don't think that in laboratory research work, right? We don't want to give humans mycotoxins and see if they develop breast cancer, so we give them to animals, folks, and they develop all the same diseases that you see in humans who get into a lot of mycotoxins. You have to know that if your home is sick, your animal will be sick, and you will be sick, when the home is healthy, no mold in the home, you know, no stress in the home, then the animal is usually very, very good, good looking like this, just thriving, and your family is too. So if you're sick all the time, look at your pet. If your pet is also sick, think of the home. If your pet only is sick, think of mycotoxins in his food supply. Blue, high five. You did really, really good. You are a wonderful dog. Thank you. Might be the cutest dog in the world, Blue. His owner is standing here holding the camera right now, Trevor. Great dog, Trevor. Now, into the kitchen we go with nobody else but Kyle Drew, and he's making a pasta. Well, I'll let him explain it. All right, all right. So you're on the Kaufman diet, and you're kind of a pasta eater, and so... You've tried some of the alternative pastas out there, the buckwheats and, and, uh, and different kinds of noodles, maybe quinoa. But the fact is, is that there are precious few alternatives to old fashioned wheat pasta. Well, I wanna give you another idea. And this isn't so much a recipe, it's just an idea for how to use an alternative kind of pasta. Now, this is a brand name that I'm, I don't care about the brand name. Uh, but this is a type of pasta that's in liquid. I'm looking at myself to make sure you're seeing it. But it is called shirataki. Not shiitake, that's the mushroom. This is shirataki. It comes from the konjac root. You're going, oh yeah, konjac. No, I know, you've never heard of that. Do you know what this is? This is actually pure fiber, which means no calories, which means no carbs, which means no mycotoxins. This is a zero calorie pasta that you can use in the place of anything that you would normally use pasta for. So I'm a little embarrassed because everything I've put on this table looks like guys did it. It's just kind of, anybody else who would do this would, made it, would have made it look prettier, but I just want you to have the idea. For example, something like a nice angel hair pasta with your, look how thin that looks. I'm so sorry, you guys. It lo doesn't look as good as if somebody else had done this, but I have chicken cut up in there, and so you can just do a little bit of this pasta with a little bit of chicken. Look at how bad this is gonna be. Mm. That tastes perfect. Now, the texture's a little bit different. It's not as grainy as wheat. It's very, it's sort of slippery, but it tastes really good and it's perfect for in the place of a normal pasta dish. Now, here's another one. You guys like that Vietnamese soup called pho? Some of you pronounce it pho, P-H-O. All it is is broth with a protein. This is chicken bone broth and I've already put the chicken in, I've heated it up. That wasn't too interesting for TV, so I didn't do it. But then it goes over noodles like this, okay? Noodles. And so you spoon that in. Now, again, you'll wanna season it the way that you like it. 
Most pho also has different herbs on top, and you can see that we're gonna get the pepper cracked on there. But the broth for me is the key. I start with a really nice bone broth, and now I'm gonna taste this. Look how big this bowl is. <laughs> Could you imagine taking this? Hey, I'll have this bowl of pho. Let's give. It's excellent. It needs more herbs. I'm gonna put some cilantro on it. I'm gonna add a few things here and there, but salt it, pepper it, season it, and you've got here the noodle part, right? That is the uh, shirataki noodles. You've got the broth and you've got the protein, which is chicken this time, but you can mix it however you like it and you get that noodle in there. And it's filling. The thing about it is, is that shirataki is completely fiber. So what does that do? As you're eating this, it, you really get fuller faster. I know we don't talk about calories too much on the Kaufman diet because it's not about calories. It's not about so many grams of protein, so many grams of carbs. And so, we don't do it that way. We just talk about yes foods or no foods. And everything here is a yes food. But for those of you who kind of like to look at the calories, understand this, it's a bag. You're gonna have to strain out the water and rinse it and then just heat it for about 60 seconds, not long. And this, zero calories. Zero calories. There are a few out there that have soy mixed in, so be careful with that. But basically, I want you to know, the Kaufman diet gives you options. It's not just a what I can't have, it's how creative can I be with what I can. You know, as I review these shows, isn't this a fascinating show? I am just a humbled host, but thank you for all the great writers we have that put it all together. Thank you, Kyle. Fascinating pasta dish. Thank you, Blue, and Trevor, the owner of Blue, for bringing him in today. Uh, thank you so much, Nurse Jenny. Uh, did you learn about gluten today? Isn't that fascinating, folks? We're all staying away from wheat because we think we're gluten sensitive. And I would guess some people are gluten sensitive, but probably that number of all of us. The rest are going off wheat and barley with mycotoxins in them and they're feeling much better and they're suspecting it was gluten. Probably isn't. And thank you so much Dr. Trowbridge and Dr. Mitchell again. To go 10 minutes with them was amazing. To go 10 hours with them is even more amazing. Thank you for all their feedback. Thank you for your eyes on the show. God bless you folks. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.